Hi, my name is Alex Wiseman. I'm Associate Professor and Coordinator of the Comparative and International Education Program in the College of Education at Lehigh University. I wanted to talk for a second about some of the uh, specific ways that I have approached education and thinking about education by looking at global trends in schooling. Uh, my personal research agenda has a couple of different prongs. I look at school organizational culture as one of those main prongs uh, within, within my agenda. Um, some of the research I've been doing recently has been related to gender and education, which I've uh, surprisingly been in uh, and thinking about for about the past 10 years. And I, I take a very um, sort of system, systems level macro approach to thinking about gender and education, thinking about trends in education across nations. And the specific element that I've been most interested in lately has been what some people call single-sex schooling, what other people would call gender-segregated schooling at the national level. In other words, how do national systems of education separate or segregate schools based on a student's uh, gender? Um, the most extreme example being Saudi Arabia with complete gender separation or segregation into boys only and girls only schools, even at the ministry level, even though they, they combined the boys ministry and the girls ministry of education a couple of years ago. But within this new unified ministry, there's still a boys and girls uh, track. And one of the things we look at, or, or I look at specifically, is why do systems separate? Right? What's the context for that? What are the particular advantages for some countries in, in doing that? And then how are there perhaps, shall we say, different um, ways of separating or segregating based on gender? One of the things that's interesting is to think about the countries that don't separate at all, that have completely uh, gender mixed or co-educational schools, versus those countries that have a, a varied mixture of single-sex and co-educational schools, and then those countries that are uh, mostly gender segregated. In other words, uh, more than half of their schools are specifically separated by gender. Those countries that are in the uh, middle group are the countries that are um, often using single-sex schooling as a uh, pedagogical or a cultural technique. Um, they think about ways that boys or girls' education is actually enhanced when they're in single-sex classrooms, either because they believe there are particular ways that boys and girls learn that might be fundamentally different, or they think that there are specific uh, social uh, contexts that make learning more advantageous for boys and girls when, they, when it happens separately. Those countries that, that do not gender segregate or have little or no single-sex schooling are those countries that are often more uh, interested in democratic effects of schooling or have um, uh, maybe perhaps newly developed independent school systems. They might be uh, recently um, uh, former Soviet satellite countries that have recently developed their own model for education that has sort of grown out of the tradition that they used to have. And then there are those countries at the extreme end that look at education uh, separated by gender as more of a mandate, either a, a social mandate or a religious mandate. One of the interesting things though, instead of diving into each of those three individually, one of the interesting things that crosses all of those different countries is that at the national level, policies for education are increasingly focused on, and I'm going to be very careful about my wording here, gender egalitarianism. Meaning that there is a, there is a uh, focus on making the policies and the structures for education equalized in the way that leads to gender parity. And I'll go back to my example of Saudi Arabia as one of the more extreme in terms of separating students and schools by gender as an example. For instance, if you look at some of the key indicators in Saudi Arabia for gender parity, again I'm, I'm very specific about my words, those being access, achievement, and opportunity, you can find that in Saudi Arabia, the only country that completely gender segregates, each of those indicators points more towards gender parity than inequality. For example, in terms of access, if we look at enrollment levels or enrollment ratios between boys and girls of school age, 
you'll see a dramatic shift in the past couple of decades from a largely lopsided enrollment rate, where boys were enrolling at a much higher rate than girls, to a relatively equal enrollment rate now. In other words, boys and girls of school age are enrolling in school and attending school in Saudi Arabia at relatively equal levels. So in terms of access, the access tends to be on par based on gender in Saudi Arabia. That's interesting. If you look at achievement, and again, looking at these uh, big cross-national studies of, of math and science achievement, like TIMS, um, you, can, you can actually see that in Saudi Arabia and some of the other largely gender segregated countries, that girls are either performing at no significantly different level than boys, and vice versa, boys aren't performing indifferently than girls, or girls are in some cases outperforming boys. Now in Saudi Arabia, there's no significant difference between the performance of boys and girls on these internationally legitimized tests. Again, suggesting that there is relative parity in achievement between boys and girls in Saudi Arabia. If you look at opportunity to learn indicators, those would be indicators like uh, the kinds of, or the quality or the characteristics of teachers that are teaching the boys and the girls measured by teacher experience, uh, teacher training, um, the actual curriculum that's being delivered in the classroom, the type or the pedagogical methods that are being used in the classroom. Again, if you look in Saudi Arabia, there is no difference between what the boys and the girls are getting, even though fundamentally the schools are separated. Boys go to boys only girls, girls go to girls only schools. Um, there, are, there are only male teachers in the, in the boys' schools, only female teachers in the girls' schools. So even though there is this fundamental separation between boys and girls, all of the, the sort of key indicators of education structure, the way that the, the actual system is structured, point towards parity. Now this is a, an interesting, I think, dilemma and phenomenon in global educational trends that we need to think about more carefully. And it's one of the things that I've been investigating uh, for the past several years.